Hello everyone and welcome to Spring Hill Church. I want you to know how much I appreciate you taking the time to spend with us today for our online service. We're gonna have a great time in the presence of God, in the Word of God, and in worship today. And so I wanna ask you a question. Did you join us today with an attitude of expectancy, believing to receive something from the Lord today? Well, just take just a moment. If you haven't done that, just say, Lord, I expect you to speak to my heart today. I expect you to do something in my life today. And you know, the old saying goes that your anticipation or your expectation is God's invitation. And that's what we release and we believe by faith that God will show up and he's going to do something in our lives. And you need to know he wants to move in your life. And so he's just good and he loves you that much. Let's open our time together in prayer. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for my friends and family that have joined with us today for our online service. Lord, I believe in the name of Jesus that your anointing is present with them just like your anointing is present with me. And Father, we purpose in our hearts to receive from you today. We know that you're a good God, that your mercies endure forever that you're for us and not against us. And Lord, we just believe in the name of Jesus that you have good things in store for the upright. And so Father, we release our faith right now and believe to receive from you today. And Father, we thank you for it. I thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit, that he is there with them just like he's here with me. And I believe that he will show up and he's going to move in this service today. And Father, we thank you for it. We believe you for good things. And we love you with all of our hearts. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Now, as we do every single week, we're going to take the first few moments of our time together and we're gonna spend it in worship. And as I tell you every single week, listen, don't be a spectator. Don't be. let this be just entertainment. No, enter in. Enter into the worship, turn it up if you can. and and uh, just enter into the music and the worship and open your heart to express to your heavenly father how good he is, how kind he's been to you, how much you appreciate Jesus and all that he's done for you. And just open your heart and be ready to minister to him during these next few moments as we worship the Lord. So let's do that. Let's praise and worship our God. And then we'll be right back in just a few moments with today's message. Hey church, thanks for joining us. Come on, stand to your feet. We're going to worship Jesus. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn. Till I met you I was breathing but not alive And all my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you
break out the weight of your glory I need a shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future, my eyes are open When you call my name
I want us to read a scripture together today. It's Isaiah 41, verse 18 through 20. And it says, I will open up rivers for them on the high plateaus. I will give them fountains of water in the valleys. I will fill the deserts with pools of water. Rivers fed by streams will flow across the parched ground. I will plant trees in the barren desert. I am doing this so all who see this miracle will understand what it means, that it is the Lord who has done this, the Holy One of Israel who has created it. I'm going to read this morning from Psalm 106, verses 9 through 12. He commanded the Red Sea to dry up. He led Israel across the sea as if it were a desert. He rescued them from their enemies and redeemed them from their foes. Then the water returned and covered their enemies. Not a single one survived. Then his people, the Lord's people, believed his promises and they sang his praise. What we just heard were promises from the Word of God, and His promises are true. His promises are yes and amen, and we can believe His Word in faith today. We're going to sing this next part of this song, but I just want you to know today that God is on your side. He's with you. He's for you. None of this catches Him by surprise. God doesn't get surprised. He knows everything. (laughs) So today, let's sing this with faith. Come on, if He did it before, He's going to do it again. I said, if he did it before, he's going to do it again. Come on, so let's lift our hands, lift our voices, let faith rise. Come on, where you're at right now, lift your hands, let faith rise. Come on. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when, even when I don't see it, you're working For you, he is for you. 
I want to tell you again how much I appreciate you taking your time to spend with us today. You know, I never take that for granted. It's a whole lot more fun ministering the word of God, knowing you're there ready to receive and hear from heaven. And so I appreciate you so much being with us today. This is week number three in our series called Keys to Powerful Prayer. And, uh, you know, we're just taking our time. The Lord dealt with me to slow down a little bit and to take our time with teaching on prayer. Prayer is such an, uh, such an important part of our lives as believers. It's, you know, probably second to our relationship with the written word of God. There's no other spiritual discipline that we can have that is more important. And so we're going to take our time. We're going to dive into some things. We're going to get into what prayer is and to, you know, be very practical and talk to you about different kinds of prayer and how to pray those different kinds of prayer. But let's look at our foundation scripture found in James chapter five and verse 16. I'm going to read it to you from the New King James and then the Amplified Bible and then the Passion Translation. The, The New King James says this, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And here's the point that I want to get from James. And that is this, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The Amplified Bible in that last phrase says this, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. And then finally, the Passion Translation says this, for tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. And so as we've been teaching over the past couple of weeks, prayer is is what connects us to God. It connects us to the power of God and is like the doorway that we step through in order to access the power of God. That's why it makes power available. And uh, so we've talked about some of those things. And by the way, listen, I want to encourage you, go back and listen to the previous couple of messages and download the notes so you can study some of these things out for yourself and get these truths down on the inside of you. Now, we talked about a definition last week of prayer, and this is from me. This isn't from anybody else. But I want to say this. Prayer, simply put, is communicating with our Heavenly Father, the Creator of the universe. It is connecting with Him in a real and powerful way. And so I, I, again, we're going to explore some different aspects of prayer. I want to talk about something today that I believe will help you understand prayer and maybe take some of the uh, formality or the rigidity out of it. I don't want prayer to be some type of religious act that you participate in. And uh, I want it to be meaningful. I want it to be something that is life changing for you and uh, accomplishes a whole lot. And so uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. And and so let's go back to in the Old Testament to Exodus, the 25th chapter and the first and second verses. So we have the children of Israel. They have been delivered from Egypt brought out into the wilderness. And so, uh, you know, here they've been in the wilderness for a period of time and the Lord begins to speak to them through Moses and gives them some instruction. So chapter 25 of Exodus verses one and two says this, then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. So God says, hey, I want you to go to the people and I want you to receive an offering from the people. Now, let's look at why God gave those instructions to Moses. In verse 8 of the same chapter, 25, it says, and let them make me a sanctuary. Now, get this. This is the whole purpose that I may dwell among them. 
So he goes to Moses and he says, hey, Moses, I want you to receive an offering from the people so that they can build me a place, a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Then further down in the same chapter in Exodus 25 in verse 22, <clears throat> the Lord says this, and there, now this is a promise, and there I will meet with you and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, which are on the ark of the testimony about everything, which I will give you in commandment to the children of Israel. Now, what's interesting, if you really study the book of Exodus and, and the journey that the children of Israel had coming out of Egypt and when God first encountered them, God's original plan was for them to construct him a sanctuary, a holy place, so that he could come down and dwell among the people and he could speak to the people and freely uh, fellowship with his people. And um, what messed all that up was uh, a rebellion that took place and uh, the people made the golden calf and so forth and so on. And, and it caused God to have to isolate himself because of the sin and rebellion of the people. So then he had to be shut away in the tabernacle and, and could only speak to them through Moses. But I want you to notice in verse 22 of Exodus 25, there's two things that God wanted to accomplish in the building of this tabernacle or this sanctuary. Number one, he wants to meet with the people. And then number two, he wants to speak with the people. And so I want to build upon those two things today. And I want you to look at this with me because God's plan, you know, one thing you'll learn about the Lord as you walk with him for a period of time, especially as you study the word of God, when God put something in motion. Uh, you know, I often say God doesn't do random and he doesn't do accidental. When he puts something in motion, such as the construction of the tabernacle and all of the things that went into that, there is a plan behind that that God never deviates from. Now, the how and the why and the wherefore might change a little bit as far as how it's orchestrated, but the purpose never changes. So I want you to notice and, and, and make note of the, the two reasons that God wanted to dwell among his people was number one, so that he could meet with them. And then number two, so he could speak with them. Now, I want you to notice the, the verbiage in those two phrases that he said in verse 22. Notice he didn't say, I just want to appear to the people. I want to just show up so they can see that I'm God. And, and uh, you know, that's all part of it. But notice what he said. I want to meet with the people. And then he said, I will speak with you. Notice he didn't say, I'll just speak to you. I'll speak over your head. I'll speak about you. No, he said, I want to speak with you. And so that implies in that uh, phraseology that this is going to be a two-way thing. It's God's plan for this to be a two-way interaction. And so let's look at the first part of that. Number one, God said, I will meet with you. Did you know that in the Old Testament, the tabernacle, the physical tabernacle that the children of Israel had and traveled with all the way up until the time that, uh, you know, David uh, facilitated a different tabernacle and so forth. The tabernacle 135 times in the Old Testament is called the tabernacle of meeting, the tabernacle of meeting. So God's original intent was that this place be a meeting place where he could meet with his people. In Numbers chapter 7 and verse 89, it says, Now when Moses went into the tabernacle of meeting to speak with God, he heard the voice of one speaking to him from above the mercy seat that was on the ark of the testimony. From between the two cherubim, he spoke to him. So that's one example where the, the tabernacle was called the tabernacle of meeting. God's intent was he wanted to meet 
with his people. So the tabernacle was the place. It was the designated place that God wanted to meet with his people. God desired to have a place where he can meet with his people and he still has that desire. And we'll explain that a little more as we get into this. So it sounds like two different things, meeting and speaking, uh, you know, these two different things, it sounds like they're the same thing, but really they are different. You know, if you think about it, in today's communication with today's technology, you know, I can send you an email and say something to you, but I haven't spoken with you and we haven't had a meeting. You know, I can meet with you, but not really ever speak with you. You know, there we have to be mindful of, again, technology these days that can facilitate meetings that are very impersonal, uh, you know, and listen, when you start having Zoom meetings where there's hundreds of people on there, you know, just tons and tons of people, that's not going to be very personal at all. But God desires to have a meeting with us, one, and two, so he can speak with us. So there were occasions in the Old Testament where God would have would have something to say to the people. So he would send a prophet. The prophet would say what God said, but God was not there to meet with the people. Can I say it to you this way? And I hope I don't lose anything when I say this, but God sent an email to the people through the mouth of the prophet. And so that was never God's original intent. God's original intent was, is he wanted to meet with the people and speak with the people. So why does God want to so seemingly so desperately meet with his people? Well, we can see a pattern in the Bible of where God met with people that had a, these people had a meeting with God and you know, and you'll hear me say this very often. It is impossible for someone to have an encounter, a meeting with God and leave that meeting that time, the same that they started or same as they were when they started. Let me give you some examples. You know, we see in, in the book of Genesis where God met with Abraham or Abram at the time and called him out, called him to leave his family and, and to go to a place that God wanted to show him. You know, after that original meeting, Abram was never the same. And of course, we know later on, God changed his name to Abraham and he became the father of the children of Israel. And, and uh, God had a covenant relationship with Abraham. And of course, the Lord Jesus himself ultimately came out of Abraham. But think about it. If God had not had that meeting with Abram, who became Abraham, then, uh, you know, the lineage would not have been in place. The covenant would not have been in place for the Lord Jesus to be able to come into the earth. You know, we have already mentioned and we talked about how God met with Moses. You know, we, we know the encounter of God meeting Moses. On, on Mount Sinai and the burning bush and, and gave him the instructions and, uh, you know, told him that he wanted to, wanted him to go and to deliver his people and so forth. And so Moses was never the same after that meeting with the Lord. God met with Joshua, you know, after Moses died and, and it was now Joshua's responsibility to lead the children of Israel. Well, God met with Joshua and, and Joshua was not the same after that meeting. God did something in Joshua's life. You know, we, we, we know about David, how David met with God several times in his lifetime. And every single time that he met with God, he never left that meeting the same. There was something that always happened. You know, going into uh, the Gospels, we know God met with Zacharias and, and Elizabeth, who ultimately uh, gave birth to John the Baptist. And we know Zacharias had an encounter with God and God met with him and he was never the same after that encounter. You know, God met with Mary, 
the mother of the Lord. And uh, you know that story. She definitely was never the same after that encounter with him and after that meeting with him. And, uh, you know, she'll be forever known as the natural mother of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the, the Gospels, we, we see where Jesus, who was God made flesh, had meetings with the disciples. And the, the disciples were never the same after those encounters. And then all of the ministry opportunities where Jesus had a meeting with people, you know, whether they were blind or, or <clears throat> crippled in some way or, uh, you know, some, in some form or fashion, and Jesus met them and ministered to them, they were never the same after that meeting. You know, we know how Jesus, after he was raised from the dead, you know, Peter had uh, really messed up, really blown it, denied the Lord three times and, and was carrying the guilt and the burden of all of that. And Jesus had a meeting with Peter after his resurrection and restored Peter and did something on the inside of Peter. And Peter will never be the same following that meeting with the Lord Jesus. You know, might have heard of Saul on the Damascus Road. He had an encounter, a meeting with Jesus, so much so that it knocked him off his animal or his donkey, uh, camel, whatever he was riding. And, uh, you know, he had an encounter with the Lord and, and Saul was never the same and ulti ultimately became Paul, one of the greatest apostles that ever lived, ended up writing two thirds of the New Testament. And then, you know, lastly, we have Jesus encounter his meeting with John, the apostle John, no, later known as John the Revelator, and where he met him in, and what we now have as the book of Revelation. And Jesus ministered to John and gave him the revelation of what uh, we have to look forward to. And John was never the same because of that. So, I could go on and on and on with scores of people throughout the scriptures that had encounters with God and never left that encounter, that meeting the same. So when you have a meeting with God, there are three characteristics that take place. Here, here are the three characteristics of a meeting with God. Number one, in a meeting with God, it can be very personal. You know, there's no one who knows you better than the Lord himself. So uh, he intends for his meeting with you to be very, very personal. Number two, in a meeting with the Lord, there's an encounter. You will encounter him in some form or fashion. You will, and, and, and I'm specifically nowadays, I would say through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, but you will have an encounter with him that will be life-changing. And then third, in, an, in this encounter that takes place, there is an exchange. There's an exchange that takes place. And you can see this in the characters that I've already mentioned from the scriptures, how there was an exchange that take place, took place in that encounter that they had with the Lord. They gave something up to the Lord and God did something on the inside of them. And so God wants to have a meeting with you. He wants that meeting to be personal. He wants that meeting to be an encounter with him. And he wants that meeting in that meeting for there to be an exchange. In other words, he never wants you to leave a time with him where you are not different, where there is not some type of exchange that takes place. And this is God's plan for prayer. This is God's plan for prayer. He wants prayer to be a time where there's a meeting with God, there's an encounter with God, and there's an exchange with God. Now, I know, you know, I, I, I'll explain this more as we go along, but you know, if it, 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 your prayer could be something very simple, but you need to understand <coughs> that although it's very simple, it's very spiritual and that there is something spiritual that takes place in that time of prayer. 
And, uh, you know, I think sometimes maybe we just, uh, just don't understand the depth of what we're doing. You're having a meeting with the creator of the universe. I don't care if it's a simple prayer. You know, if you're doing something at work and you say, Lord, I believe for your help in this situation. I thank you for helping me to solve this problem. It might be something as simple as that. Consider that to be a private meeting with your heavenly father. It's personal between you and him. And whether you feel like it or not, there is an exchange that takes place. You know, don't pray a prayer like that and go away and say, you know, I wish I, I wish God would have helped me or I wish, you know, I would have gotten something. No, leave that even that simple one sentence prayer, believing that God heard you. He responded to you and there was an exchange that took place. So prayer is when you meet with God, there's an encounter that happens. And in that encounter, there is an exchange that takes place. So what we do is we come to God in prayer. We bring him our worries, our fears, our anxiety, our shame, our sin, whatever it might be. And we bring that to him in prayer. And in turn, he exchanges, exchanges that for his peace, his acceptance, his righteousness, his love, his assurance that he's, he's fighting our battles for us that victory is already ours through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he wants to do during that time of prayer. So it's a personal time and uh, it's an encounter with him and there is an exchange that takes place. Now, the second aspect of these meetings that, that God wanted to have with his people and he still wants to have with his people. And other, number one was he wants to meet with you. And then number two is he said, I will speak with you. I will speak with you. Exodus 25, 22 again, God said, and there I will meet with you and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat. You know, I was going to mention this scripture later on in, in wrapping, but uh, Hebrews 4, 16, God said this, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Did you know you have access to the mercy seat just like Moses did, just like the Old Testament saints did? You have access to to the mercy seat. And God said, I will speak with you from above the mercy seat. In other words, when you go to God, I want you to expect there to be a two way interaction. And, and listen, I'm not insinuating or implying that you start listening for voices and things like that. Again, as we develop this series, I'll, I'll show you and teach you how to hear from the Lord. He, he's going to speak to you right down here in your spirit, but he wants to speak to you or speak with you. Nonetheless, again, God didn't say, I want to speak about you. I want to you know, talk to Jesus about you, although he does do that. He said specifically, I will speak with you. So he desires for there to be a conversation. He wants to hear from you and he wants you to hear from him. So where does God want this meeting to take place? Where, what is the meeting location? Well, in Exodus chapter 25, verses eight and nine, again, I read these scriptures earlier. He said, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show you. That is the pattern of the tabernacle, the pattern of all of its furnishings, just so shall you make it. So God instructed Moses to build this tabernacle based on the specific instructions that he gave him. And the reason that he gave him was so specific is the earthly tabernacle was a copy of the heavenly tabernacle. And this was a place where, where God could dwell and meet with his people and speak with his people. So 
in the Old Testament, they had a physical place that they could go and they could worship the Lord. They could offer their sacrifices. They could uh, meet with the Lord and God would have an encounter with them. But thank God for the Lord Jesus. Thank God for what he did because he eliminated the need for us to have to go to Jerusalem uh, to go to the temple in order to worship the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter six and verse 16 says this, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Now, this is the point that I want you to see for you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, and this is a quote from uh, the, the Old Testament scriptures we've already read, I will dwell in them and I'll walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Here's what I want you to see. You don't have to go to a temple. You are a temple. The Bible says that you are the temple of of the living God. In the same chapter, it says that you were bought with a price and your physical body is a temple of the Lord. And so, you know, there's nothing wrong with going to a physical location to worship the Lord, going to church, going, you know, to some type of gathering or assembly, nothing wrong with that at all. But you are a portable tabernacle. You have the creator of the universe living and dwelling on the inside of you. And in your recreated human spirit, God indwells you. And I love the promise. I will dwell in them. I'll walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. You know, John in the book of Revelation said this, then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepares as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. So here's my point. God wants to meet with you and God wants to speak with you and the good news is, here's the beautiful thing about what Jesus did for us. When Jesus died on the cross and he paid the price and shed his blood and that price was paid for you and me. And when we receive that and we get born again, you and I become the dwelling place of God ever uh, as valid as that Old Testament tabernacle, as the temple of Solomon, uh, you know, the temple in the Old Testament, you are a portable temple of God. And God lives and dwells on the inside of you by the Holy Spirit. And so in order for God to meet with you and God to speak with you, he's already done all of the work. All you have to do is make yourself available to meet with him and let him speak with you. He's already there. You already have him on the inside of you. Again, that scripture I mentioned a moment ago, Hebrews 4, 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. See, you know, I, people will say sometimes, you know, pastor, I pray and it just doesn't feel like my prayers go anywhere. Well, guess what? Your prayers don't have to go anywhere because you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you to meet with you and to speak with you. In other words, your prayers only need to go as high as your nose, you know, because God lives there. He lives on the inside of you. And so prayer to us um, doesn't have to be this big, formal, laborious thing. Now, your meeting with God can be as formal or as casual or relaxed as the Spirit of God wants it to be. But what I want you to understand is, and again, I'm not against physical places, physical buildings, but you need to understand that in order for you to have an effective prayer life, and to meet with God and let God speak with you, you don't have to go anywhere. 
You have him on the inside of you. So my point in this lesson today is this. I want you to view prayer as you being able to meet with God. And in that meeting, it's personal. There's an encounter with him and there's an exchange that takes place. Again, when I, you know, listen, even when you pray over your food, Heavenly Father, thank you for this food that we're about to receive. And Father, we thank you that you've provided it for us and blessed it to the health and the nourishment of our bodies. And it is sanctified by our prayer in Jesus name. See, don't let that just be something that you do at the beginning of the meal just because it's what we do. <laughs> no, believe that something happens when you pray, that God heard your prayer and that there was an exchange that took place at the moment that you prayed. So God, again, wants his meeting with you to be personal. Uh, you know, understand, God knows everything about you. He's personal with you, and he wants you to be personal with him. That means you can be honest with him. You can be vulnerable with him. You can drop your guard with him. You can be personal with him. God wants to have an encounter with you. In other words, there's a time where you visit, you fellowship, with one another. And then in that time of encounter, there's an exchange that takes place. You need to believe that every time you bow your head in prayer or say a prayer, there is an exchange that takes place on the inside of you. So what he does is he takes away the pressures of life and gives you peace. Somebody says, well, I, 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 I hear what you're saying, Pastor, but I prayed and, and nothing happened. Again, you've got to believe that there's something happening. You have to believe that God is, is ministering to you. He's speaking to you. And uh, your confession ought to be, hey, when I finish that time of prayer, there's an exchange that took place. I'm different. I'm not the same person that I was 30 seconds ago when I said that prayer. Now, Here's the last thing I want to say to you, and that is this. Someone paid a great price to arrange this meeting between you and your heavenly father. He paid a great price, so much so that it cost him his very life. It cost him his blood to be shed for you. And he paid the price. And of course, his name is Jesus. Jesus paid the price for you to be able to have a meeting with the creator of the universe, the, the most high God. He created and pay, or paid a price, paid the price for you to be able to have that encounter with God. So I want to ask you a question. Are you going to go to the meeting? Are you going to plan that meeting? Are you going to schedule that meeting with God? You know, you don't have to be hard and rigid with that. I'm just saying, you know, do you need to set apart some time so that you can spend time with God in prayer and just renew your mind to the thinking that prayer, my prayer life is a meeting with God. And in that meeting, it's personal. And in that meeting, there's an encounter. And in that meeting, there's an exchange that takes place. And I am different when I leave that meeting. I want you to begin to believe that because I believe that will revolutionize your thought and concept where prayer is concerned. And prayer will become a whole lot more meaningful to you. Amen. Do you receive this today? I know you do. Let me pray over the message and close it with prayer. Father, thank you again for the word of God that we have heard today. I thank you that Jesus said the word is a seed. And I believe, Father, as we have heard the word, the seed has been planted into our hearts. And I believe that that seed will produce a harvest in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray for every single person that's watching this video today. I believe, Father, that prayer will become something more special to them, that it'll become more meaningful to them. And Father, it will be just change 
their perception of what prayer is all about, and that in turn will change their lives. And Father, I thank you for it. I praise you for doing that in Jesus' name. Now, if you're watching this this video today and you don't know where your relationship with God is, you know, you maybe you've been to church, maybe not. Maybe you've never really, you know, thought about your relationship with God. Well, I want to invite you today to enter into a relationship with your heavenly Father, the creator of the universe, God Almighty, who already paid the price for you to have that relationship. He already sent Jesus to the cross. Jesus shed his blood, paid the price. He was dead, buried, and was raised from the dead, all so that you and I could have a relationship with him. And I want to invite you to do that today. You know, I, I don't like to, you know, maybe necessarily uh, ask this question because I don't like to come across as manipulating, but I will say this. If your heart was to stop beating just a few moments from now, do you know that you would spend an eternity with God in heaven? Well, if you're not sure about that, I'm going to pray a prayer with you, and I want you to pray this prayer after me. And, and when we get through with that prayer, again, we're going to have a meeting with God. We're going to encounter him, and you're going to have an exchange, and you're going to be able to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I am born again, I am forgiven, my past sin is gone, Jesus is the Lord of my life, and I will spend an eternity in heaven. So pray this prayer with me, just a simple prayer. Pray this after me, say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I need a savior today, and I believe with all my heart that Jesus died for me that he was crucified for me, that he was buried for me. But I believe that he was raised from the dead. And I believe and declare that he is the Lord of my life. Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sin wash me in your blood, make me clean and holy. Now fill me to the full and overflowing with the power of your Holy Spirit. I thank you for forgiving me. I thank you for a brand new start. Today is a day of new beginnings for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, <laughs> listen, I believe you just had an encounter with God and I believe there was an exchange that took place. Your old dead spirit, your old that old dead man on the inside of you was removed and the Bible says that you're now a new creation in Christ Jesus, that old things are passed away and behold, look, he said, all things have become new. You are forgiven and you are now a child of the Most High God. And you can say with confidence, I am on my way to heaven. Hallelujah. So we rejoice with you. We're thankful. Listen, you, you made the best decision you could possibly make in your life. I want to ask you to do something for me. This will be good for you. The Bible says that when we testify on the Lord's behalf to men, that he, he speaks about us. He testifies to, uh, to uh, us are about us to the Heavenly Father. So here's what I want to ask you to do. Would you just send me an email to say I prayed with Pastor Brad and I gave my heart to Christ today? And you can do that by emailing my story, M-Y-S-T-O-R-Y, at springhill.cc. And just let me know you prayed that prayer. I'm not going to ask you to you know, give a big long testimony. It can be a one sentence email and you can send that to me because we want to pray for you. We want to celebrate with you because we, again, we believe you just made the best decision that you could ever make in your life. Listen, the rest of your life and what happens in the rest of your life is all now hinged on that one decision that you made 
to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. And we love you, we're so proud of you, and we believe God with you for all the good things that God has in store for you. Amen. Family, church family, we love you and appreciate you. Thank you for being with me today. I love you so much, and I pray that these services are being a blessing to you. And and uh, I want to just remind you, don't don't miss out on Wednesday night Bible study. I'd love to have you join us on Wednesday night. We do that live on the Zoom platform, and and uh, on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., you can go to our website, springhill.cc, and there will be a link there that you can click, and it'll connect you with Zoom, and you can be a part of our live Bible study that we do every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Love to have you be a part of that, and uh, just you know be able to say hey and, and see your face and, and just uh, join with you. But uh, also, I wanna just remind you that we'll be meeting online like this for the near future. And uh, so just keep joining with us and be praying and believing God and know that God has good things in store for us as a church family as well. But let's take just a moment before we leave today and let's worship the Lord with our giving. I wanna tell you how much I appreciate your faithfulness to obey the word of God in your tithes and offerings. You guys are awesome. And I believe in Jesus' name that as you obey the word of God, that you're opening the door for God to pour out his blessing, his provision in favor and bring increase into your life in a great way. And I believe he's true to his word and he will do what he said he would do in his word. So thank you so much that you can give three different ways. You can mail it in, you can give online, you can text to give. All of the instructions are there on the screen for you. And uh, I wanna tell you how much I appreciate you and appreciate what you do to support your local church and your church family. But let me pray over your giving today. Father, thank you once again for the precious people of our church and the, and the giving that they do. Father, they're honoring you with their finances and with their resources, and they're declaring to you that they trust you to meet every need. And so, Father, I agree with them that every need of every household is fully and abundantly supplied. Thank you, Father, for ministering to them this year. I believe, Father, that 2024 will be a year of increase. It'll be a, an unprecedented year financially for them. And Lord, I thank you for it. And I believe, Father, every need of Spring Hill Church is met. We declare and say every bill is paid, every vendor is satisfied, and we have more than enough to do everything you've called us to do. And we thank you for it, and we believe you for it. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Well, I love you so much. Don't forget about Wednesday night. Come see us. Join us on Bible study on Wednesday night. But listen, I want to declare a blessing over you as you get ready to go. And, and here's what I believe. You know, my faith has not changed because we're online. I believe that because you put God first today, whenever you might be watching this, you have set the course for your week coming up. And so I believe you're going to have an outstanding week this week. I believe you're going to have the best week of your life. And so I want you to join your faith with mine and receive that and just begin to declare that. I am going to have the best week of my life this week in Jesus' name. But let me declare this blessing over you as you get ready to go. Father, thank you for the wonderful people of Spring Hill Church and our friends that join with us. I declare, Father, that they are blessed of heaven. I declare, Father, that your favor rests upon them. I declare, Father, that you're smiling down on them, that because of Jesus and what he's done, you're pleased with them. Father, I thank you that they are strong in the Lord and in the power of your might, that they can do all things through Christ, which strengthens them. And I declare, Father, in the name of Jesus, that they're filled with wisdom, filled with, with supernatural ability, that they are anointed, appointed, and approved by you. And Father, I declare, declare no weapon formed against them shall prosper, that every plan of the enemy is stopped and stilled right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we believe and declare we are getting ready to step into the best week of our lives coming up this week. And Father, we declare it to be so. We believe that we receive it and we love you, Father. Now use us this week to touch and change the lives of people that we encounter 
In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. One more thing I wanna say to you, and that is this, you know what's coming. Something good is gonna happen to you this week. I believe it and I declare it over your life in Jesus' name. I love you, God bless you, have an outstanding week, and I'll see you next time.